So we're going to look at different hides and see what those different hides would be good for making. So if you have a, one hide that is really thick and doesn't have a lot of stretch, that, that type of hide can be good for certain things, whereas a hide that's much thinner and lighter might be not lighter in color, but lighter in weight is going to be good for making other things. So this hide is the one we're going to start with. Can you hold this up? Awesome. So this is a fairly thick hide. And when you look at it, it has very little stretch. Does have a lot more stretch than bucks. And this I think is definitely a buck, probably a fairly young buck because it's not a ginormous hide. Also, this is one that somebody else started tanning and then I finished it up and it's, it's slightly stiff. So because this hide is slightly stiff, that doesn't mean it's bad. What it means is that it's going to be really good for making a bag or making a hat or something like that because it's actually advantageous for those purposes to have a hide like this that's a little bit stiff. So if this hide was a little softer, then I would say that this was a really good hide for a pair of pants because um, for pants, you want a hide that is not super stretchy because you don't want the, the hides to stretch out on the areas where you have a lot of movement, like on the butt or on the knees, because if it, it does stretch out, then it's going to look like you have a big dump in your pants or like you have growths going on at your knees. And that would be dorky, maybe in the way that we don't, aren't going for here. So anyway, um, bucks are good for pants. And I typically, if I'm making a pair of pants, and I'll talk more about this in subsequent videos, but if I'm making a pair of pants, I would use one hide for both backs and one hide for both front pieces. So um, this was a little tiny deer. It's very sad. Hopefully it was a roadkill and no one shot this deer because that would be just so sad. So this hide I have tanned and then I smoked and then I dyed it with black walnut mm. and do you like the color? I love it. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty huh? So um, this hide could be used for a sleeve like on a jacket like just it's actually good to use a whole hide just for the sleeve because you want the backbone to be going up and down in this direction. If you put the hide in some way like this where the backbone is not up and down, then the backbone, which is a much stiffer part of the hide, is going to stay the same and the other parts are going to stretch. And then it's going to be super awkward to wear. And so it's important when you're laying out patterns to always lay them in a sensical way where the backbone is either along this side or if I'm like making a jacket, you would want the backbone to be like this. And so... Um, and so that's like how I would lay out this hide. This hide, because it's pretty small and because it took the dye on really, really beautifully, I'm going to use this hide just for accents. So like on my jacket here, like you can see, I mean, this has been worn, this jacket mm -hmm. is like 12 years old and I've worn it so much that it's kind of mostly all turned kind of gray, which is what always happens to buckskin if you wash it over and over again then it's gonna just kind of fade to gray but you can still see that this this is a sugar maple leaf cut out that I made and it is dark dyed black walnut buckskin whereas this is just regular regular tan buckskin so that's it's really nice to have dark colors like this for accents so that's what I'm going to save this hide for now this hide, feel how soft it is. Isn't it lovely? And it's a pretty light hide. It doesn't have any holes to speak of. I've actually already played with this hide. And I actually already um, wet this hide. I got it wet last night and wrung it, just hand wrung it out. And then I flattened it really, really carefully. And then I flattened it so that I pulled the neck and the tail apart and then I did a lot of pushing the sides out in order to make the hide lay flat. And it's really important to do that before you ever make cut pieces out for patterns. Because if you don't do that, then when you go to wash your garment, 
it's going to shrink back into a certain position. And that certain position won't be the one that you sewed the garment in. And so it's gonna end up being all crooked and weird on your body. Mm -hmm. So I always wash my hides not in a washing machine, but just in a bucket with cool water and wring out the water, dry them flat before I make patterns out of them. So this hide, I'm feeling really excited about making myself a new buckskin skirt because my old buckskin skirt is very short <laughs> and it's nice and it's great and all, but now I'm a mom a more and nice. I'm just feeling the longer skirt thing a little more for some reason. And you can feel how soft this is and it's pretty light, for a skirt, you can have some stretch. So like we've got a little stretch here, which this is a doe hide. So doe hides always have some stretch because those does are needing to grow with pregnancy and shrink after pregnancy. And so their hides are much more stretchy than the buck hides. And so it has some stretch, but that totally is compatible with making a skirt. We're not going to want our waistband to stretch and I'll show you a technique for that. But the fact that the hide in general is stretching is totally fine. So this is gonna be a lovely hide for a skirt. It would also be a great hide for a shirt. Like if I wanted to do this sort of thing. Shirts also are, it's totally fine if you've got some, um, some give in your hide. And this could be Nice for just like a front and back shirt. I wouldn't use it for a, or a lightweight shirt. I wouldn't use it for a jacket and I wouldn't use it for something like this where, where it's tight fitting because if something is tight fitting like this, you don't want it to stretch very much because if you do, then it's gonna not be snug anymore. And so you, for this, I would, I probably use like a, a young buck hide so it was a little bit stiffer but for a loose fitting shirt this would be perfect for a jacket you'd want something thicker sure. and this <clears throat> is actually its mate it's the other mm. um skirt hide and these two i believe were actually smoked together you can see they got a little singed in the same place, <laughs> which is sad, but it's not the end of the world because it's just on the edge mm -hmm. and it's on the neck edge, which that's why I always put the neck down while I'm smoking because if they get singed a little bit like this, then it's not really that big of a deal. So this hide is, um, again, very similar to that other one. It's even a little more stretchy. Um, this is the one that I think is gonna end up being the front hide for the skirt. And it, unfortunately, it got cabled um, on the front. I asked one of my friends to cable it and he just didn't understand about cabling. You wanna always cable, of course, on the um, membrane side of the hide. You never wanna cable on the grain side of the hide because then that abrades the grain. And you can see these are barbed wire scars. Okay. Those aren't from cabling. Okay. But just this like fuzziness is not what we want, especially for the front hide of a skirt, but whatever, it's gonna be okay. Now this hide, um, you know, this is a hole that I'm pretty sure happened from, um, like see how there's multiple holes in a row? Like probably how that happened was when they were removing the hide, they nicked the hide with a knife and then that um, opened up these holes in a row, which sucks. But it's also, there's plenty of usable stuff on this hide, even though it has that slit. And this one too, you can see, you can actually see here how there was a knife mark coming across and then during the process of tanning, it opened up. But this one, even though it has this hole right here, the backbone is still really viable and the backbone honestly is the most valuable part of a hide because we can make waistbands out of it and we can make all sorts of like straps and things because it's the strongest and least stretchy part of the hide. So because this hide already has this big hole in it, that's something I might do is choose to cut a waistband piece out of here. Although it's definitely not the least stretchy backbone I've ever seen. So it's kind of hit or miss. But this hide also I might just use for cutting up into smaller pieces. So this is an interesting hide because it is pretty thick even though it's fairly small. 
And so it being thick and small, the conclusion I'm going to draw is that this is actually a cape tide. So what that means is that this hide only is from like here down. And so like someone had a buck that they wanted mounted and then this was the leftover scrap. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a fine scrap. It actually is kind of nice to get cape tides because they tend to have really nice rear ends. <laughs> And so oh, yeah. this is like a nice, thick, um, pretty hide. Now this color, um, Kate was just commenting on how pretty this color is and it's a gorgeous color. And something that I really wanna encourage y'all about is that it's nice if you get a really pretty color like this, but it's only gonna last for a very short time. So like if you make a garment out of this and you wear it like, you know, a few times a week for a year, there's no way that this color is gonna stay. It's just gonna fade to gray. And even if you're only wearing it like on special occasions, then you have to like put it in a bag totally away from sunlight or the color is gonna fade. So don't get too caught up on the color <laughs> of the smoke. And the color of the smoke comes from um, what you happen to smoke that particular hide with. and. This one, I think, was mostly actually pine punk. I used the outs from the outside of the pine so that I didn't get any heart of pine, which you don't want. The heart of pine can be rather incendiary, and that could cause major problems <laughs> when you're smoking hides. But so this hide, because it's short, it I wouldn't make a pair of pants out of it. Um, it might be nice for a jacket. It's, it's a thicker hide. I might just use it for a bag. Um, it actually doesn't have any holes to speak of except for these little tiny guys because um, I think that the bullet wound was probably through the heart or through the head. So this hide, um, yeah, it could be used for lots of different things. Also, the backbone of this hide is really thick and nice. And so that could make a really good waistband. So I'm actually just, well, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> under the floor. So this hide is another thicker hides. And this one, you could patch these little holes and make it into like a pair of pants. This could be a good pants hide, except it's just awkward shape. Like for a pair of pants, you're gonna want something that doesn't, like this has this weird like um, asymmetrical neck. And so that is not gonna work as well for like a pair of pants. Um, what happened with these holes is when this hide was half tanned, it somehow was in a bin that mice were able to get into and they uh. chewed these parts. And that's really sucks. <laughs> it's really, it's really sad. But this hide is still, you know, useful for lots of things. And even though this hole goes right through the middle of the backbone, we could still get a couple of really nice backbone pieces out of this. And I think for that skirt, I think this is what, this is the piece that I want to take the um, take the uh, the waistband out of. Mm. And so when you're looking for hides that you're going to use for the waistbands and for straps and stuff. You want to look for a hide that already has some issues with it that you're not going to want to use entire. When you cut that backbone out of the hide, it really makes the whole hide worth a lot less. And so it's nice if it already has some minor issues like that. So yeah, I think that we've looked at a lot of different hides. So <laughs> I think that's good. And now um, we're going to get into pattern making.